This episode of TopCast is brought to you by UCF Online. 20 plus years of award-winning online excellence, 75 plus online programs, one of the largest and most innovative universities in the U.S. UCF.edu slash online. From the University of Central Florida's Center for Distributed Learning, I am Tom Cavanaugh. And I am Kelvin Thompson. And you're listening to TopCast, the teaching online podcast. Yep. Yep. Here we are, listening to the teaching online podcast. And doing uh, weird um, 70s voices. Yeah, before we, before we hit record, um, for some reason, we were reminiscing about the 70s when we were both quite young. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I was born yet. I think uh-huh. I was... <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, weird stuff, you know, you get stuck in there from like, I was raised by television, Tom. So, you know, a lot of those voices and faces I do kind of remember. They're they're like mother's milk. Yeah. Well, I heard a comedian say one time about Gilligan's Island, which was a staple of my summer yeah, vacations. No, um, yeah. Do you remember that Gilligan's Island episode where they almost got off the island? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> every <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a thing. Uh, I, when I was indoctrinated into the, my college marching band, we went on our first away game trip on one of those charter buses, and it turns out that they had this this thing. I was like, "What in the world?" I found my tribe. Uh, they had the, you had to load your own little uh, light switch above your head on the charter bus, and uh, somebody would start the the theme song from Gilligan's Island. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. And everybody started flipping the switches. The lights? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I was like, yes. (laughs) So everybody now knows Kelvin's tribe. (laughs) Some weird, geeky TV-watching people. (laughs) And coffee yeah. drinkers. And coffee drinkers, probably keeping yourselves up on the bus ride. That's right. And I hear the dulcet gurgles. <laughs> That's a good band name. The dulcet, the dulcet gurgles. gurgles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're they're opening for the Indigo Girls this weekend here. <laughs> opening for the Savoy. Yeah. <laughs> Spastic colon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is this that I see in my cup? Yeah. That's Black Gold, Texas Tea. Oh, that was a whole different show. Different 70s. <laughs> a, 60s, 60s? And 70s. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Jed Clampett. Uh, this, Tom, this, I, where, where did I write this down? What is this? Oh, yeah. This is a single origin Chiapas, Mexico from Dunn Brothers Coffee in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So, this, Tom, this coffee is a reminder to me that timing is everything. In coffee as in comedy. Do tell. Mm, so I walked into the lovely on-site Loring Park roasting location of Dunn Brothers Coffee on a Saturday morning right outside the park, only to discover that if I had entered just the day before when I also walked by, in that moment, I could have saved a bunch of money because there was a heavily discounted Friday special on the just-roasted Chiapas. Nevertheless, I was happy to pay full price for the beans after I sampled a freshly brewed cup. So timing is everything. So why don't you take a, take a uh, little sip. pause and see what you think of this stuff. I like it. Uh-huh. It's good. Chiapas is a, is a state in Mexico, isn't I it? I believe that's correct. Yeah, most of the single origins kind of get their name from either a, re- a region or a, or a farm or a family who's uh, doing the roasting. So Chiapas, yep, yeah, uh-huh. So do you get the connection? I do. Timing yeah. is everything. Timing is everything. So mm-hmm. um, ask me, what is the secret to comedy? What is the Timing. S- <laughs> Timing is important in comedy and in education. Yep. Sure. I got it. I get it. So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about... Um, Live, synchronous, educational delivery. Yeah. Without being in person. Yeah, all that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It is a it is a funny thing. Like, I mean, not to go off on this because we could. Uh, some of our wording is weird, right? We, we've talked about this a little bit before. And I'm sure you've all, as listeners, thought about this some. 
are words like live, real time, virtual. They insinuate a lot, don't they? Like real time as opposed to that. Fake time. Yeah. <laughs> Fake, fake news, fake what time. That? Yeah, that's right. And we, you know, we can talk about it a little bit if we want. But like we have here, some uh, conversations about um, setting up some special classroom uh, settings uh, to match one of our one of our um, uh, cousin uh, service area state colleges, and they're, they're called synchronous learning, synchronous classrooms. I'm like, well, isn't all learning synchronous? <laughs> don't you don't you learn wherever you are, whenever you're there? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're parsing now. I, think, I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we have this classic construct in our online education um, literature and, and thinking, like, right, the whole time and place thing. You could imagine the quadrant, right? Same time, same place. It's like a regular face-to-face classroom. Different time, different place is what we might now call traditional, classic, online Asynchronous. Courses. Asynchronous, that's right. Uh, different time, same place, different time, same place, rare, but there are some niche examples, like even some like uh, lab kind of things or self-learning carols in uh, particular contexts in the library or museums and so forth. Um, and then same time, different place, which is really kind of our focus today, right. you know, kind of in, in various and sundry formats. So what we typically think so when we think, typically think about the, the affordances and the benefits of online learning, we're talking both temporal and spatial mm-hmm. flexibility. In this kind of a model, you have spatial flexibility, mm-hmm. but not temporal flexibility. That's right. That's, a, that's exactly... Okay. I'm just restating right. kind of what you no, just I, said. And you said it better. That's, that's right. And I think it's worth saying, right, we talk a lot about this here, and, and maybe our listeners do too, that you get the most flexibility with uh, different time and different place, right? Because when we talk about students can fit education into their right. into their lives, the more quote unquote non-traditional profile they are, the more that you know they gravitate toward the different time, different place. But you you can maybe get something back by uh, having the the same time, different place thing. But you maybe are losing something as well, right? You're losing a degree of flexibility. Right. Yeah. I mean, you definitely are losing a certain amount of flexibility because you have to, you know, sign in and be present at a certain time, even if you're at home or Mm -hmm. whatever on another state. Um, But, you know, like we always try to say here, let the content dictate the treatment. Yeah. If a particular objective must be accomplished by having that synchronous element, then... You know, it's worth that lack of, mm-hmm. of flexibility, uh, you know, and obviously that's a, that's a cost benefit that every faculty or institution needs to weigh for themselves. But, you know, Tom, I just wonder if everybody who wants to make those kind of decisions is doing that cost benefit analysis. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> because we've had those conversations here, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's true. I think in some cases, some people um, think it's the easy way out. In some ways that, uh, OK, I just need to sort of, you know, log in with my webcam and I don't have to change my practice at all. Um, but you really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, some of those, well, like even when I, my wording a moment ago, well, you get something back, right? If you do real, you do real time, <laughs> same synchronous, right? right? You get something back. Well, get some, what? Get what back? What am I getting back? I'm getting, I'm and I think the, the insinuation is I'm getting some of the human experience back. Well, are you? Is that, is that a human experience just because we're talking in real time? What? So I think there is something there worth um, pulling on the, the, the thread a little bit. Our colleague here at uh, UCF, Chuck Jubin, you know, has been quipping for uh, a couple decades now, I think. Uh, the, when did face-to-face become the gold standard against which everything else is? is measured. And I think by implication, the synchronous thing is like some sort of a uh, corollary to that, you know, that if you have uh, synchronous, then you're a little bit closer to a non-virtual, actual, real thing. Right. It's more authentic somehow. More authentic somehow. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you can all imagine in your heads, um, you know, having a camera set up at the back of a large lecture hall uh-huh. uh, from on a wide shot and... Uh, having that be a pretty non-engaging experience 
Um, so, you know, if you, you can do it badly and, yeah. and do harm, <laughs> educational harm. Yeah. Um, and, and the idea that, uh, that you don't need design, you don't need thoughtful, intentional decision making, you don't need preparation, you don't need support. Now I feel like I'm doing um, like a, a medical supply commercial for <laughs> old people. You don't need preparation. You don't need support. Uh, you know, that it doesn't have any negative impacts. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, we've literally had conversations with uh, with colleagues about stuff like, like this. Oh, it'll just, they'll be fine. Yeah. Well, and in many cases, there are legitimate practical reasons why somebody might be exploring it, such as... Um, you know, you you are connecting uh, two locations mm-hmm. um, where where you may not have sufficient enrollment to justify running a course in either one, but yeah. together you could. Or maybe you're you're combining people who are kind of far flung uh, at their own individual computers, but at different locations yeah. around the state or around the country. Um, or maybe there are pedagogical reasons. You know, I've, mm-hmm. I have talked to faculty here about uh, you know doctoral graduate education and the kind of you know, around the table, small group seminar that they wanted to replicate online. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do in that kind of a format asynchronously through a threaded discussion. Right. And so, you know, there are valid pedagogical reasons to explore this kind of instruction, but it, it's not a panacea and right. you can't go into it without intentionality and, um, and good design. Yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. And, and, you know, I would, I would say this, any, any literature I've ever seen about any kind of flavor of, um, of synchronous, uh, the two that come to mind right this second are um, Hyflex, which um, uh, Beattie, uh, Rigolith have written about, and um, uh, Anders Norberg and our UCF colleagues, uh, Chuck Jubin and Patsy Moskal, have written about the um, time-based blended model, kind of like everything's online, but it's synchronous online, and and um, can asynchronous I, online. Can mm-hmm. I stop you? Can you define for those who don't high know flex. what high flex is? I can. Oh yeah, sure. I can try that. Uh, I'll probably get it wrong, but I'll I'll <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give it a I'll give it a shot. So high flex is like it's it's you know it's one of my favorite devices, Tom. It's a portmanteau. It's. <laughs> I know how you feel about this. I do yes. like portmanteaus. Uh, high from hybrid, aka blended, and flex from flexible. So the idea is a a flexible participation policy that allows student choice across uh, various component modalities so that they're choosing between online, face-to-face, and a hybrid experience so they can kind of come and go, students can, as they wish, seamlessly through through that. And so they can come to a face-to-face session whenever they want, mm-hmm. or if they prefer to log on and, and participate, they could do that if they want, and it's the student has complete agency in that choice. That's That's right. Uh, so it's probably more a a policy than uh, you know than anything, but it has implications for design because it means you've got to you've got to think that through. Right. Everything has to be available everywhere in every way, so that you can not be disadvantaged by going to one. You know, well, I I I went to the face to face the other day and they didn't address that, or I did the online thing and, and, and I didn't get the same information that that, that you guys got face to face or whatever it was. Well, can you elaborate a little bit on the time-based blended? That yeah, you sure. Thanks. To? Uh, so online synchronous plus online asynchronous, no face-to-face, uh, as a type of, of blended. So blend, uh, the, the challenge to our typical thing is it's not about space. It's not about, you know, you come to a place and you go to a virtual space. No, instead you stay in a virtual space. It's just that you connect at the same time or you don't connect at the same time. So it's a time-based blended uh, approach. Um, so Chuck Jubin, Patsy Moskal here at UCF have written about that with Anders Norberg, our Swedish colleague. And we've got some instructional designers, including uh, Rohan Jawala, some mm-hmm. others um, who've been espousing that and wanting to experiment with that some more. And like everything else, I, th- I think it, it has its place, right? But where I was going is in both of those cases and possibly others, synchronous related stuff, anything I've read, it says the points that we're making. There's got to be intentionality. Mm-hmm. You've got to think it through. It's got to make sense. There's got to be support. You've got to communicate to students. You've got to, you got to, you got to, you got to. It's not just poof, it's going to happen. So do you have any personal experience teaching uh, one of these kinds of courses? Yeah. Um, 
I uh, taught in a program that for a series of mysterious reasons, it seems like, um, has one course section but two different modalities. Um, you know, so here we have our, well, we, we have W online and M uh, mixed mode or blended courses. And so students can sign up for the M version or the, or the, the, on, or the W version, but mm -hmm. there's only one of me and there's only one course and there's only, I only got paid once. Uh, and it's an interesting design challenge Yeah. to, to really think that through to, to the point a while ago of you, everything has to work everywhere. So I, I had some positive example, positive experiences and a, and a, and less positive experiences. Here's a quick thing. Um, when I first was doing that, I'm like, well, as an online learning guy, can't disadvantage the people who can't come face to face or don't want to come face to face. You can't do something face to face that is going to leave other people out, right? That's not good. Anything that's going to affect people's grades or, or anything else. So I first said, okay, well, it'll be a, it'll just be an optional human moment, Q and A, check in, optional discussion, and then. I'm like, okay, well, I've got to like do a little summary of what happened and then send that, post that online so that at least there's the Cliff Notes kind of version of people know that we talked about some stuff. And after like the first time that um, we met, you know, folks said, yeah, I'm not going back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a waste of my time. There's nothing valuable there. And so then a, a more positive example in another semester is I really wanted to make some usefulness out of this. So um, the nature of the course, it made sense. Uh, and the class meetings were already scheduled. They were handed to me, like, here's the meeting times. you got to do something uh, during those times. So I would have a guest speaker on site, um, poor man's uh, shoestring streaming video and audio in real time uh, and record it so that uh, if you wanted to come face-to-face, -face, you could meet with the guest speaker and hear her or him. If you wanted just to tune in in real time, you could listen to and, and hear and interact with and ask questions of the speaker. Or if you couldn't make it or didn't want to, you could just catch the recording. And it didn't matter mm -hmm. which of those things you did because the, the only assignment um, was based upon the content of the presentation, uh, like a reflection or, a, or um, so an that's application. The, that's the high flex aspect. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. But it, to get to that part, <laughs> it took me a while to yeah. think that through. and and you know make sense of it so you got to make strategic design choices regarding what to offer face to face you got to communicate clearly with students uh, like i said you can't uh, you can't disadvantage anybody and and it's got to it's got to add something if you want that same time same place there's got to be in that high flex model there, there's got to be something there you can't be like oh yeah i'm not going back to that that guy just you know showed up and yeah otherwise it's it's just a it's just an online class that you're teaching to an empty room. That's yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, well, you know, we, I know that we have um, had uh, like best practices on our website. They might even still be there. If they are, we should link to them in the show notes mm -hmm. about, um, about synchronous course delivery and design, yeah. or at least synchronous elements, which is yep. most of what we do here. We've got occasional exceptions where we'll deliver something, but um, you know, it includes things like, um, you know, preparation, and it includes, like, if it's going to be connecting two classrooms together, we're actually in the process of developing some best mm -hmm. practices yep. based on others' experience, but, you know, the, the classes can't be too large, the technology has to be, you know, you can't get in the way, you can't have such a lag that it's distracting or, right, or prevents right. you from learning. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have support at both sites, not mm -hmm. just at one where yep. a faculty member is. And if possible, depending upon the geography, uh, I'm a big fan of having that faculty member split time. Absolutely. Occasionally go to one site versus another site. Yeah. Um, it, it can probably be done well having more than two sites connected, mm -hmm. but it gets, I think, exponentially difficult the more sites you add. That's um, where the technology could probably make a difference if it was yeah. like a really – the platform's really designed to support that yeah. efficiently or something. I, at a previous institution, I um, uh, was part of a, a kind of early exploration of, of a, a system that they were trying to connect two different teaching sites where they were trying to ensure that they had enough enrollment to justify running that section. Um, but a piece of technology that they ended up choosing was 
it was better suited to individual person behind a computer. But they were piping it into a classroom where you might have six or eight people in the room or more. Um, and it, it wasn't really optimized for, like, if you wanted to raise your hand, that there's one system for the room. Mm-hmm. Um, so they ended up, I, I think, after I left, evolving that into allowing people to be wherever mm-hmm. and using that system and maybe getting something else to connect those two classrooms. Mm -hmm. So that technology choice, I think, is critical for success. Even if everything else is working, if if you've chosen the wrong platform to have that synchronous connection, you can submarine all your efforts. Yeah. And I guess just to call this out, right, I think probably, uh, I think most of us uh, who've been involved with online teaching and learning, we're probably most familiar with synchronous as a small island in the in the in the context of the ocean of an asynchronous course like uh, optional synchronous office hours optional synchronous uh, review sessions for uh, the midterm exam or something like that but you've already hinted at you could have the entire thing being synchronous. Well, or, I mean, there's a required. large, there's a large and vibrant uh, lecture capture vendor community. Yes, there is. And um, they're and they're doing another, something. That's right. <laughs> that's, no, synchronous. that's right. That's synchronous. Uh, that's synchronous. Uh, even if if many students are consuming them uh, on demand mm-hmm. at two in the morning and watching it at double speed right that's before right. midterms. <laughs> you do hear those stories. Hypothetically. <laughs> Hypothetically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't you know could, your voice was that deep. I just thought, <laughs> I just thought it was that long this. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could go and watch it live, right? Um, right. Synchronously, right? Um, and that's a version of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. No, that's exactly right. Or I think something we don't see as often in the asynchronous online course world is like regular required synchronous sessions because it's back to that. What are you giving up? You're giving up some of the flexibility. I signed up for a for a course that I was expecting to fit into my own life, and right? And right. now you're telling me I got to come at a particular time. Tuesday at six o'clock. I got to log Whether in. Whether I like it or not. Right. And I I work. Right. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Yeah. And and I also think that you know maybe one of those those cost benefit um, considerations is the the level of interactivity that's yeah. available um, versus what you're willing to give up. Um, mm-hmm. So, for example, like a lecture capture system. I know many of them do have yeah, yeah, interactive yeah. elements, yeah, yeah. but if you think about just your generic basic lecture capture system where you are essentially broadcasting what's mm-hmm. happening in a mm-hmm. classroom um, to, so it's one to many. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if you're allowing that to be consumed on demand yeah. after the fact, mm-hmm. interactivity kind of goes out, interactivity kind of goes out the window a little bit because it's really hard for a faculty member to manage, especially if the numbers go, go large, if you're broadcasting essentially, as opposed to a point to point or a, a, um, a platform that allows individuals to all log in and you can see all their names or maybe their faces and they can raise hands and you can give them control of the microphone or the whiteboard or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, there, there's, you know, I think I've used this before, many flowers in this garden, right? And uh, they all smell a little different. <laughs> Some things smell. <laughs> yeah, different. That's well, I don't know any other any other points you want to make on this. I think it's a it's a rich topic, and, and frankly, it's not something we do a ton of here right. compared to other schools. But it is it is definitely part of our portfolio. Yeah, absolutely, and and it and it's worth more thoughtful consideration, right? I, I guess maybe just reiterating a couple of um, design principles that that at least suggest themselves to me. I'll, I'll throw them out there and you see if you disagree with any of them. Um, fundamentally, what's the problem you're trying to solve with the synchronous, synchronous offering? Whether that's, that's the right first question. Whether it's least. the whole course or whether it's a, a, just a, a little element within the, mm-hmm. uh, the asynchronous course. What are you trying to solve? And then why is synchronous the best option for students uh, in that particular challenge? Recognizing that you're forcing them to give up half of their flexibility. That's yeah. correct. And then... Which is also related to provide design support to faculty, if at all possible, either a, a trusted faculty colleague with a lot of experience or a, preferably a professional instructional designer so that that person can facilitate that 
the stuff you talked about, the the alignment with what are your what are your goals for students? What are your instructional objectives? And how do how do these things all flow together? Yeah. You know? Well, you know, there's a, not to interrupt, no, but please. there's there's an interesting example of our, that our colleague Wendy Howard is working on here. This international. Um, oh yeah, right. Uh, pilot that she's been kind mm-hmm. of working on over the On-line last several Online abroad, she calls it. Online abroad, yeah. And and the idea is that she goes abroad with a class and a faculty physically member, on a plane, physically to another country, and broadcasts live mm-hmm. back to the students in in the states here in Orlando who could not travel yeah. for a variety of reasons, work or finances or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they we still want to give those students an international experience. Mm -hmm. And Wendy's able through kind of consumer technology Mm -hmm. to connect back to those students back in the States and allow them to be a live participant in whatever's going on in Europe or South America or some of the other places that she's been um, and ask questions, Mm -hmm. see what they see. She can point the camera around. Uh, She can represent their voice to the faculty and the other students in that class who might be walking down the street in Portugal or someplace. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, doing something like that not just adds pedagogical value but cultural value for the student's experience. It's a high-impact practice. That's exactly what I was going to say. When you're describing that, I'm thinking that is absolutely classified as a high-impact practice. And a shout-out here, our um, our, uh, friend and colleague uh, and sometimes top cast visitor, uh, Katie Linder, um, has... uh, uh, co-edited a book that's coming up on online high-impact practices, uh, and uh, as I recall, I got a chance to look at that in advance. And there's some there's some synchronous elements there that I think are really evocative mm-hmm. uh, as well across like multiple institutions and and so forth. But design design is what it comes back to, and and uh, communication with students, institutional communication, if at all possible, like through modalities and definitions and stuff, but also individual instructor communications up front, yeah. pre-syllabus. And well, and to underscore, I mean, the reason why I brought up Wendy's Online Abroad is that, you know, your point about support for faculty. Yes. You could not reasonably expect a faculty member to do what Wendy does That's right. on these trips. They're too busy being a faculty member. That's so you right. need to provide that level of support, both technical and and kind of, you know, design, um, and, design and instructional. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree. I agree with that. And all of your choices should be intentional and should be worthwhile, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think we've said all we can say about that because our time is like up and our and my Chiapas coffee is my gone. Chiapas is, is, is cafe muy bueno. Yeah. That, yeah. Whatever you said, that was it. Was <laughs> it was like it was it was it was really good coffee. Um, Maybe, All that's, right. maybe that's what you said. Yeah, there's something like that. I hope. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You want to uh, you want to give us the bottom line? Yeah, I don't really do pithy, Tom, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> uh, so uh, another ten minutes. Um, I guess I'd say it's important to be intentional. Intentionality has been a bit of a theme as we've been talking. It's important to be intentional about our modality decisions, and those could be formal modalities, like some of our institutions have online and blended, or informal modalities, like sub-modalities, like elements within um, a course experience, or within a, uh, you know, like a co-curricular experience Mm -hmm. uh, as well. It's important to be intentional and to design and teach using best practices that are appropriate to those modalities. Now, that's as true of synchronous online offerings as it is of any other option that we have at our disposal. That's true. Good design is good design. Good design is good design. Well, b- you know, now that we've landed the plane, but before we de-plane de- and get onto the uh, jetway, yes, uh, may I have a moment for a, a little plug? Yes, have a plug. So um, a reminder to our, our wonderful listening audience that an episode of this very podcast, TopCast, will be recorded live in front of a conference audience as part of OLC Accelerate 2018 in Orlando this fall. Synchronously, we might even say. That's right. That will be in November. So please, could you help us crowdsource the topic of this episode? Please, please. <laughs> there's a there's a brief form um, at this URL. It's uh, http uh, colon slash slash uh, bit.ly. So that's B-I-T dot L-Y. Uh, slash vote underscore TCL, that's TopCast Live, TCL 2018. 
Uh, that's all uh, lowercase. So again, it's bit.ly slash vote underscore TCL 2018. We will put it in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Please go and and uh, and um, and let us know what you think uh, we should talk about in that episode. Mm-hmm. Share it with your colleagues. And um, the more votes we get, the better. Uh, vote early, vote often. Mm-hmm. We won't we won't tell if you vote more than once. <laughs> That's right. That's true. And, uh, you know, hey, copy and paste that URL in an email to a colleague and yeah. send it to them. Get their opinion about what we should talk about. Tweet it out. Tweet it out. And if you are going to be at OLC Accelerate this year, 2018, please join us. Um, I, I did look at the conference schedule. It is on Wednesday. Uh-huh. Um, so please uh, look for us in the in the program. Uh, Kelvin, I imagine, might have some coffee. I'm going to try to bring some coffee, yeah. I might try to remember to bring some stickers. Yeah, we'll get um, some stickers. And, uh, and um, hopefully you can be a part of that recording. We'd love to have you. So awesome. Um, until next time, for TopCast, I'm Tom. I'm Kelvin. See ya. See ya.